to lead to match on a beautiful map Mirkwood, which is normally being used for free for all matches, but these guys, they want to play on it, and I'm down. Right now, Mirror, and we get to play the Mordor faction. All right, all right, not bad, not bad. Mordor and Isengard, who now has the strength to face against the forces of Isengard and Mordor. Maybe Saruman was right, maybe he was wrong, we will find out. And Mirkwood is again normally a map we will see most of the time being used for the 1v1v1v1 matches, the free for all matches in Battle for Middle Earth 1. And because the bases from your ally and your side, you know, is just too far away from each other, that's why it's not a great 2v2 match or 2v2 map rather, but it's okay. Gollum. And we will be building a orc pit. And you know what we're gonna do at the beginning of the game? After capturing those settlements, we will be using our golem to lure the works away from the lair. And then we will be creeping one work lair. The reason is simple. We will get money boost and also we will get additional settlement. And Mordor with three Lamremirs. Holy guacamole. So basically, if you have enough resource income with the Mordor faction, you will be like super strong. You know what I'm saying? And for that reason, um, creeping is a solid choice, should be fine. And if we can get an Orc Battalion from us to level 4 this way, we can also combine him later on with an Orc Archer to get a very early combo Battalion level 4 on the field. So basically, again, we gotta wait until Gollum arrives to the lair, then use the Gollum. This way the Vargs are gonna follow him, and then we're gonna focus on the lair only with the Orc Warriors. This is the plan. Follow me, Vargs. <laughs> Follow me now. All right, additional lumber mill workers are also required just to get the money a bit faster. And now, I see you. And by the way, Eye of Sauron doesn't only give us the damage boost, which is gonna help us out, of course, to burst down this layer, but also will help us to level up twice as quickly. And you can see they are level three. And now, since they are untouched, our orcs, we can also creep and kill the orcs, and then we will have additional settlement. Pretty good, pretty good. Can we actually maybe make something happen with the Golem here? Hopefully, we might be able to steal a part of the money. Come on, Golem! Uh, no, Golem! Oh, he got the money, but it's fine, it's fine. Dude, I'm fine, you know what? It's a El Clasico matchup, by the way. It's Mordor, Isengard against Gondor Rohan. Just like in the films, boys. Just like in the films. I like that. I told you guys I want to play free-for-all matches, and normally, you know, this would be a free-for-all match, but they wanted to play a 2v2. Let's recruit one Orc Archer now, and we can combine him with the level 4 Orc afterwards, just to have, like, a very strong and reliable unit at the beginning of the game, which is going to help us out, of course, to defend our settlements early on. And again, um, it's a great matchup for uh, both the sides, you know, I like to play both Gondor Rohan or Mordor Isengard. Because I like these clashes between evil and good. But in this case, we will be trying our best to make Mordor victorious. Lord Sauron is gonna sh or shall rule Middle-earth. So let's combine them, just like that. Level 4, beautiful. And now we have a really strong unit on the field. I'm assuming he's creeping the Vorklayer right there. Don't cash loads, keep building stuff all the time. And the last spot in our base is going to be safe for the Troll Cage. And again, our ally is Isengard, he will be hopefully getting some combos on the field, and then we can boost the combos big time with the Eye of Sauron, Tainted Land, and of course the legendary Drummer Trolls. And later on even the Witch King, so long story short, <laughs> the combos from our ally are gonna hit like an absolute track with the War, war Chant, and of course also eventually Lourdes later on. So leadership should be a no problemo. Look how much damage we are dealing. Do you see that, guys? Again, so many units, but we might be forced to peel back. Hobbit actually doing a lot of work. Okay, let's peel back. One more slaughterhouse, and again, the last spot is going to be saved for the troll cage. We can capture this one and also attack the mill or the farm rather behind this piece. Let's do that. Keep up the pressure all the time, you know? Oh, he has Elmer on the field. That early. I was not expecting that, to be honest with you. That's kind of... Unfortunate, because I will now be feeding the Eomia with additional experience points, and he will be eventually getting level 4 quite soon. And yeah, that's not good, because the Rohir marches later on, they're gonna be a problemo. And again, that's a big map, you know, bigger than Anorian is. So having this mobile units working for you, hitting and running all the time, might be actually quite decent. And look at that, we need to peel back, but Eomia is annoying. 
Don't follow me, please. Don't kill me, Eomia. Can we save the level 4 combo battalion, though? Kill the Hobbit, kill the Hobbit. No! <laughs> back, 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 back. Nice, nice. Okay, we were able to save one unit, and this way, they will be respawning over time. It's it's not the end of the world. We, we lost one of the settlements, though. But we have for that reason, we have actually captured both the settlements from the Gonzo player, which is amazing. Now, when I play Mordor, I want to be fast, you know? I want to actually attack the enemy base as soon as possible. More orcs are required. Remember, orcs in Battle for Middle Earth 1 are absolutely for free. That's the reason why we can spam them all the time. Gollum is under attack. Let's peel back. We can actually put him on top of the wall just to get a bit more vision. He's building the stable now. And, you know, keeping the vision up on the up to date. And this, you know, this way you will be always able to see what's going on. And this is going to just increase your reaction time overall. And you will be able to adapt to the playstyle of your opponent way way easier and faster this way so what i like to do is like use my lumber mill workers and also Gollum, who is now dying to the yeoman archers <laughs> uh, just to scout this way i'm always up to date you know let's creep this one with the eye of sauron we can creep this a bit faster kill and when it comes to kill farms with the mortal faction you want to make sure to surround the farm you know you don't want to right click you want to just make sure that every unit is able to attack at the same time Gollum! There is a lumber mill worker from our ally. He's doing the same thing. My ally is actually doing pretty nice when I take a look into the minimap. Not bad. Creep this one. It's kind of lagging a little bit, guys. Not gonna lie. And the game is freezing from time to time. But should be hopefully fine. Yeah, the game is freezing. Hopefully we won't get kicked out. Thank you so much for the follow on the Twitch channel. Appreciate that. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. So, yeah, we need to now make a move. Our units were able to recover. We get also some money from the creep, which is not bad. Four trolls, four mountain trolls are required for the troll cage to hit level 2. That is going to give us the chance to recruit the best leadership giving unit of all time. Drummer troll. 50% damage, 50% armor, and 200% combat experience, which is kind of nuts. Uh, the orcs are doing a good job. Give them 3, press T. This way they will look for trees nearby and grab them. And I like to use trees exclusively with the trolls. Because this way they will have splash damage, you know? They will be able to hit multiple units at the very same time. Let's recapture the settle uh, settlement, the Lumber Mill. And put up, you know, put some pressure on him. And yeah, orcs, they won't deal crazy amount of damage, but they can be distracting, you know what I'm saying? You can always sacrifice them. Your opening can't ignore them in long terms, because if he does, he will be eventually losing every single settlement he has on the field, right? More, 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 more. Our money is looking phenomenal. Like, I need to say, uh, we have a great amount of map control, just because the Gonzo and Rohan players, they were actually creeping a lot, building lots of uh, resource buildings, and actually going for Elmia. Pretty delete stable, that's what I'm trying to say. Look how late the stable from the Gonzo players. Like, he has just one single Gondo Knight on the field. And that's not the playstyle you are looking for against the evil factions like Mordor and Isengard. Because you want to punish them early on. If you don't, they will grow rich. And it's going to be a big problem. Hey, look at that. These guys, you know, they are generous. <laughs> they are just leaving money on the ground for us. Okay. So, basically, we are scaling now. And Mordor, again, is a scaling faction in the... PFME generally. If only want to be 2 3v3, Mordor is the best faction, by the way. Also, in like those team games, Mordor is becoming like the sportive faction. What am I doing? Okay. So, my ally was already purchasing everything. Oh my goodness. That's pretty nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, they are dealing. And that's what I'm trying to see. Look, they are dealing. They are forced to deal with the Oryx. And that will buy us some time to keep our settlements protected. Our money is looking dope. We have now the troll number 4 on its way. Then we will recruit at least 2 drummer trolls. This way they can also support each other. And then again, I want to make a move fast. You know, I don't want to give them too much time. Because Gondor has a strong defense. Rohan has now Aeomir leadership, Theorian leadership, Rohir marches with Fire Arrow. So they will also become really strong. And our trolls are going to be like a, like a food for them. You know what I'm saying? Because trolls are not able to reach out to the Rohirrim archers. So... But fortunately, we can use our trolls as like a siege weapon and break the wall from our opponents to, you know, get inside the genes. That is the plan. My ally has to make a move. He has to now move out to me. So we can actually target. And he's moving, as you can see in the minimap. 
then we can target uh, the Mordor, uh, the Gondor player, sorry, at the bottom right side. Drama Troll. We will also be able to get Witch King on the field pretty soonish. And that's like a crazy... Guys, I want you to count for a second, because again, in Battle for Middle Earth 1, everything is able to stack with each other. So basically, our ally is Isengard, right? And here's Warchant from the Spellbook. Warchant gives you 50% damage and armor, okay? That's the number one. Drama Troll gives you the same, just like lift the uh, combat experience aside. Just focus on the raw damage and armor. So 100-100, just from Drama Troll and the Warchant. Then we have also uh, Eye of Sauron, which gives another 50% damage. It means 150% damage leadership only from these three tools. And we are not even talking yet about the uh, Darkness later on, about the Witch King later on, you know? Or about the Tinted Land for additional armor boost. So, long story short... Again, that's a proof that quality goes over quantity. At least in Battle for Middle Earth 1, you can make one unit strong enough to actually fight a full army. Now, he has two combos here. And he, there are so many Gondor Knights, but look, he doesn't even need pikemen, guys. Look, my ally has no pikemen. <laughs> he doesn't need them. Trust me on that one. Like, good luck trampling them. You know what I'm saying? You will see. I mean, you know, he doesn't need pikemen, of course, because we have also trolls around them. So if the Gondor, Gondor player decides to charge in, we can just, you know, easy peasy destroy his Gondor Knights with our mighty trolls. Eowyn, Eomia. What is Eomia's level, actually? Um, I'm assuming he's at least level 4. Let me check. Level 5. Level 5. Okay, th that means he has Horse Lord. He has also Eowyn, which is a great counter overall to the Mordor, to the, to the creatures like Mountain Trolls, Drummer Trolls, especially against the Witch King, of course. Oh, he has Glorious Charge? You gotta... When he uses land, we need to cover this land. He's using the land, now we gotta cover this. Okay, cover this. So our ally has leadership back in the business. Alright. Uh, and Thurin got crippled. Yeah, he has Glorious Charge, but it's not enough. Why would you heal him? That's not gonna make him survive, like me with two more seconds. And Okay, that's a great fight. Now, we gotta move on. Okay, we gotta move on now. We gotta make a move. Witch King is also on his way. Because we know Glorious Charge is on cooldown and Tyrion is dead. Now is the time for us to shine, you know? Again, when it comes to play Battle for Middle or any RTS game really, you need to play around the cooldown windows, you know? When you know you have killed like a very impactful unit slash hero from your opening, that's the time for you to shine. Spear throw. Hey, man, what are you doing? <laughs> you will get one shot with my dude, run. And there is no Gandalf yet from the Gandalf player. And yeah, I don't I don't know if they can defend this because we have only two combos. I you know our Eye of Sauron is on cooldown, his Warchan is on cooldown. That means we have literally only the leadership from the drama troll. But soon is you know Witch King is going to be on the field very soonish. Come on, Witch King, how long? Like 20 more seconds, I guess. Break the wall, break the wall. Make sure the drama trolls are always nearby, very important. And we can pressure at the same time with the orcs. Just send them out forward because they have now to pay attention around the beast, right? And we can use this to at least regain the map control. They cannot ignore this attack. They have to defend this. The question is, are they going to be able to defend? That's the big question. All right. Uh, we are just breaking a couple of, you know, walls. The Witch King is going to be there for even more leadership bonuses. Warchant from our ally should be up very, very soonish in about like 30 seconds, if I'm not mistaken. Because Warchant is less cooldown than the Eye of Sauron, if you don't know. Warchant is actually, you know, reloading quite fast. Okay, now we got to make a move. Just focus on the buildings at this point, you know. Because I believe we can take down this Gondor player in no time. It's going to turn in, uh, the 2v2 situation into a 2v1 situation. Yeah, he can't, you know, there is no way. And uh, Naora, GG. Mordor Isengard. For the win. And look at look at that. I like it. The Rohan play is brave. He's a brave heart. You wanna fight until the very end, boys. I like that. I really do. Because now we got ourselves a game, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, look at his army, though. He has like crazy army. Because his ally was leaving before he was defeated. This way... The ally from Gondor, in this case Rohan player, gets the full money, command points, and also the army from his ally. So basically, normally a good faction is 150 command points. Now this Rohan player is 300 command points because he's also getting the command points from his ally who was leaving the game, as well as all his money and his units. 
So he might build a statue and camp. But we have now the second castle. Build furnaces only. And then we can also build a siege works, you know. And then we are good to go. Again, never underestimate and always have like a backup plan, you know. Just for the worst case scenario. The last thing what we want is that he will defend himself. And goes for a massive counter attack. And we are not prepared for that. That happened to me many, many times, you know. From mistakes we learn. So for that reason, I don't want you to make the same mistake. Again, we can put some pressure on him. He has still, you know, obviously he has the Gondonites from his ally. Now we know for a fact that he has theory and glorious charge, that he has air leadership, that he has, that he has now potentially also a statue behind. So long story short, Rohan has also crazy amounts of leadership bonuses. And my ally has only two combos, but one of them is level 10. So, again, see yourself, quality goes over quantity. Come on, Siege Forks. We gotta need some catapults, but break the wall. You gotta be careful, though. After breaking the wall, we need to move a little bit aside because we don't want our trolls to get bursted down from the Rohirrim. Look, they have even Aragorn in there, by the way. They have massive leadership, too. Well, it's coming up. Statue is there. So, Aragorn, Theodin, Eomea, Glorious Church, and Statue. Holy moly. They have also Lourdes and Saruman. Okay. Play it smart, play it slow. There is no need of rushing things, by the way, at this point, because we are in a 2v1 situation, so we are leading, right? Don't throw your lead. Because Aragorn, in this kind of situations, can also get level 10 in no time, and then it's GG, you know? When Aragorn is level 10, what can you do against such a reckless seed? Aragorn will just summon the army of the dead, regardless how much leadership you got. The army of the dead is gonna run you down. Let's use Eye of Sauron here. Let's see. My ally is committing war chant, drummer troll, Saruman, I have Sauron and the Witch King. Witch King, be careful. Glorious charge. Now is it our. Let's move to I of Sauron. Now is the hour of truth, guys. Can he defend this attack? Look, our combos, you know, from our ally, they are invincible, my dude. <laughs> they are invincible. Now we can charge in with the trolls as well, I guess. Go, trolls, go, go, go. Witch King, Witch King, Witch King. You want to be careful, always keep Witch King. Witch King gives you leadership in a large area, which means you don't need to be, like, on top of your allied units, you know? T Trolls, please move! Boom, son. Oh, my goodness. The statue is down. Boom, son. <laughs> the Trolls of Middle-earth. They have also massive leadership, you know what I'm saying? They are hitting, like, a truck, too. And Fireball from Saruman. Aragorn, what can do against what can Aragorn do against that? You know, throw, smash him, pew, and Mr. Mresh is like more Mr. Goners. You know what I'm saying? GG lovely guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. It was a 2v2 between you know good and evil. I like that. El Classico, our money was looking great. We have over 30,000. You know, overall a good performance. I would say we were fast. We had good early game. That's why we were able to snowball into the mid to late game and get our victory just like that. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves and as always. Keep hitting like a truck. Peace out.